authentic pink Himalayan salt. On sale now at brighteonstore.com. Some thoughts on liberty and human dignity, free speech and censorship. I've done a lot of thinking after I went public saying that, you know, this was after the Saturday synagogue shooting of Jewish people, innocent people practicing religion in their own synagogue in Pittsburgh. And after that, I felt really compelled to go public and say, you know what? The Jewish people have a right to exist. That's essentially what I said. And for that, I was so viciously attacked and threatened and smeared and demeaned. And I'm not, I'm not reacting to that. Uh, but what I'm saying is it was a, it was a wake up call and it, it really caused me to ponder what is the core cause of all of this strife and anger and violence and even violent rhetoric that we see in our societies today, especially in the United States right now with so much political division, but there's also some racial division, there's some religious division and so on. What is the core cause of that? And those of us who call ourselves pro-liberty, what does pro-liberty mean and where does liberty come from? And it turns out that all of this, actually, there's a common underlying, you might call it, well, as Einstein was always in pursuit of the universal field theory of, uh, of physics, how, how could he explain gravity and electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces at the atomic level? How could he explain those in one elegant theory? And he called that the universal field theory. So I think there's a universal field theory that explains all of this uh, tribalism that explains liberty and, and free speech and also explains on the other end of the spectrum the hatred and violence that people have, some people have, uh, for others who are different from themselves. And that universal field theory, I propose, is consciousness. And what I mean by that is if you think about liberty, liberty really cannot exist without a recognition of human dignity. Why do those of us who espouse liberty, why do we believe in liberty? And ultimately, and, and why do we believe in human dignity? It's because we believe in the existence of consciousness, which implies the existence of a human soul, or you, you could say a non-physical soul. So there's a non-physical element of your being, of your existence, which is your soul or your spirit that interfaces with your physical body. And because you have this consciousness, and of course, scientists can't explain what this is. They can't measure it yet. It doesn't have any mass. You know, it's not something you can put on a scale and say, oh, there's consciousness. It weighs 0.01 grams. No, it doesn't work like that. It's something that's non-physical, but it interfaces with the physical, it interfaces with your brain and your neurology. But it is from that recognition of consciousness that we innately understand that we have free will, that we have, that we are alive, awake, and aware, and that God, if you believe in God, and I do, wants us to be free-willed individuals. Uh, God's not running just some giant simulation of automatons where everybody's already pre-programmed to do certain things. We actually have free will, and we can exercise that free will, and it's from that understanding of free will and consciousness that liberty, the concept of liberty, arises. Why should we be free? Why should we have liberty? Because we each have our own unique consciousness and our own free will. And liberty, the concept of liberty, is it's interwoven in the concept of, of having free will, that each individual has the choice of what to do at any given moment in their life. So this is really, you could call it an, an emergent property. Liberty is an emergent property of the innate self-awareness of consciousness. And I challenge you, to recognize that human dignity must also be another emergent property for the exact same reasons. So if we have consciousness here and we recognize that this is, this is consciousness, then we've got liberty as an emergent property and we've got dignity as an emergent property. And I believe that a person cannot be genuinely pro-liberty unless they also recognize the dignity, which is the, the, the right to exist and the existence of the human soul in other human beings. And so in, in my worldview, and I, I know this is shared by many people, but perhaps 
perhaps no one's really quite described it this way. In my worldview, liberty and dignity have to go hand in hand. If you call yourself pro-liberty, but you don't recognize human dignity, then you're faking the liberty. Your liberty doesn't come from an actual, legitimate, genuine source. You're faking it. And so, for example, there are a few you know, white supremacist extremists out there. Not that many, not as many as you would think from the media. I mean, I've lived in Texas for many years. I've never encountered a single person ever who's like, oh, join the KKK. No, nothing like that. Never run into anybody like that. And I live in rural Texas, by the way. But there are some, some extreme right white supremacists out there, and they try to pretend to be pro-liberty, but yet they despise the humanity of people with which they disagree, including Jews, for example, or perhaps black people, or perhaps uh, people who are gay. And so they don't really have liberty. They can pretend to be pro-liberty. And they can, they can go to websites like gab.com or, or what have you, you know, other, other alternative websites, you know, video sites and social media sites, and they can, they can pretend to be pro-liberty and they can pretend to be pro-America, but when it comes down to it, they have so much hatred for people that are different from them that they're then practicing tribalism. And tribalism is this belief that no one else has a right to exist if they're sufficiently different from your own tribe. That's tribalism. And that is a cancer on our society today. That's a source of incredible hatred and evil and suffering and violence and, and separation between people. 